Welcome, welcome. Um, like Amanda said, my name is Shannon, and uh, I'm the pastor here, and God gave me uh, a really awesome message today. I was thinking this, this last week, uh, it, it was said by several different people that Christmas is this huge season. It's a whole season long. We start celebrating, the stores start celebrating Christmas right after Halloween. Uh, so it's, I mean, the, the, on November 1st, the second, the second October 31st is over. You can find Christmas stuff. And actually, I, in a couple of stores, you could find Christmas even before then. Um, Christmas is a big season. And we start anticipating this Christmas season way before it gets here. And we plan and we prepare and we have family and we have parties and people come in and, and we get out of our routine and we, we, we do extra special services in here and we uh, drive the praise and worship team nuts by demanding so much stuff from them. And, and um, we do all this stuff and you, you go out, if you're a parent, and you get, you get exactly what your kid wants and hopes for and, and then some things that they never asked for, but you're like, oh, I think they're going to love this. This is going to be great. So you build up this whole thing. And then the day comes, and it's over. And it's over real quick. It, it, and it's kind of, there's always this, hmm, that, that Christmas is, is over. You waited, and we waited, and you waited. And, and even when you, when you got exactly what you wanted, it's still over. The time that you've been, that you've been waiting for is over. So, so this, this message today is is what happened the week after Christmas, because we're in the week after Christmas, all the silent night has been sung. You know, the silent night might be over, but the joyful noise has just begun. The week after Christmas was very important to the story. And it just so happens that, that church falls on exactly uh, the one week after Christmas. And, and when you, when you, look forward to it so much, we can actually get a lot out of what it is that we look forward to. There's a whole lot that can be drawn from that. Um, I know uh, there was a, a lot of new things in our, in our house now because of because Christmas. Because Christmas came, we have some new stuff, don't we, Jet? What, what is the, the coolest new thing that you have? You, you have Hot Wheels tracks. I would, yes, you do have Hot Wheels tracks, but I would say you have something at home that's even cooler than that, that takes a whole lot of care, love, and attention. A puppy. We have a new puppy at our house, and um, we can't decide whether this puppy's name <laughs> should be Trixie or Chewy, because he kind of looks like Chewbacca. Um, plus, he chews on everything. Um, we, we Ewok is one of them. I think Metal Detector was one name that crossed the, uh, you know, um, so we don't, we don't know, but we have, we have new things at our house. So uh, for the kids that are in here, how many of you have new stuff at your house that you're excited about? Yeah, me too. All right. How about for the grown-ups in here? How many of you have new stuff at your house that you're excited about? <laughs> me too. I have new stuff at my house. Uh, what, what did the Terry house get? Lizzie and Aiden, what's new at your house that you love? A barbecue pit? Did you get a barbecue pit, Lizzie? A, a vacuum cleaner? A robo vacuum cleaner. Ah, that cleans by itself? Sounds like that was mom's present. Uh, yeah. Was that your present, Lizzie? <laughs> okay, good. Oh. You want to open this awesome box at Christmas and your mom and dad brought, bought you a vacuum cleaner. That ranks right up there with your kid getting socks at Christmas. I hope nobody gave your kid socks for Christmas. Uh, but oh, did you get some socks? But if they're cool socks, it's okay. Like I got some cool socks. I got, I got a, this R2-D2 tie for those of y'all that don't get to see me up close. These aren't just stripes. This is R2-D2 and uh, R2-D2 socks. So, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to get things. But Christmas is, is, is fun, and in that moment, it's great. However, what happens after Christmas is vitally important. And we have traditions after Christmas, just like we do 
at Christmas time. I don't know if you guys do, but our family does. We go hunting every year after Christmas. Does anybody else have a tradition? Who goes shopping? Anybody go shopping? <laughs> My sister. All right. Uh, shopping, I, I heard, is really good after Christmas. I don't know. I'll never know. I'm not going. It's crazy. Is it crazy? Is it just as crazy before? Uh, anybody else have a tradition the week that you do the same thing the week after Christmas? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> You're six. All right. How many traditions could you possibly have? What do you guys do? Already? You plan for the next year? Wow. Well, that's pretty cool. You're, why you're on it? Our family doesn't plan for Christmas until Christmas Eve. Uh, sometimes. Did we get anybody anything this year? No, I'm kidding. Um, but we have a tradition after Christmas, and it's always one of the best parts about Christmas is actually what comes after Christmas. My dad and I have been going hunting the the week after Christmas since I was uh, um, I don't know since I was a little kid, um, and and I remember uh, my nephew Hudson. All the other little kids leading up to Christmas are ready for Christmas. What's Christmas? 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 And what are we gonna get? And here's on blah 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 blah. And and Hudson was asking, him, when are we going hunting? When are we going hunting? And he, he was already looking forward to the week after Christmas, which I thought was really cool. So we, we played with him a little bit. We're like, you know what? It's supposed to snow. I don't, we're not going hunting this year. He's <laughs> what? And I'm like, we, you know. So it's fun to play with folks. But the week after Christmas is super important. And some look forward to that just as much as we do leading up to Christmas. So right now, we're going to read what God had going on back in ancient days, right after the beautiful night that we all know of when Jesus was born. We know the story in Luke 2, uh, where the shepherds were watching their field by night, and an angel of the Lord came upon them, and they were so afraid. And he said, fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy for born to you on this day in the city of David is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And there should be a sign unto you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And we just studied all of that stuff and what a beautiful night. But then what? Okay, so the baby's here. They came. Now what? Okay, so if we will turn to Luke 2, New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So turn to we're still in Luke 2, but we always start, we always stop reading after, after that part that I just said, after the baby was born. We're, we're done, but there was a whole lot more that happened. If we go to Luke 2 and start in verse 20. So this is, this is after, after they, they, they hurried off, they found Mary and Joseph just like they'd been told um, and, and, and they were amazed that this is, this is happening. There's the, there's the Christ child. He's in a manger in Bethlehem, just like it was prophesied. And they were amazed. And Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. And that's usually where we stop and we have our Christmas celebration. Then what happened? Verse 20. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So we'll come back to that. But first and foremost, the very first things that they did when they returned, they glorified and praised. They let go of some heavenly praises, telling everything that they had heard and seen, which was exactly like what they had been told they would hear and see. Verse 21, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. So they were following the law. Joseph was, was rich in the law. And he was going to do this the right way, according to how they did things back then. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. 
when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was the custom and the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what this guy just said about their son. That is an incredible, imagine, imagine this is your child and here's the temple priest that you go to take your baby to as is custom. He's one of the high ups, man. Everybody believes this guy. He's one of the most prayed up, word up kind of guys that, that there is in the time. And, and he takes one look at your baby and confirms that's the Savior of the world. That's the Messiah. He said he was in the temple waiting. He was waiting for this child. And the Holy Spirit was on him. If there was ever a man who could exemplify what it means to wait on God, it was Simeon. What we can learn from this is that waiting on God is super important, very important. And that's what was going on the week after Christmas. God was making all this stuff come to fruition as they waited. Simeon was, was one, of the, one of the highest up, uh, one of the most devout men in the land. He'd been waiting on the favor of the Lord. And he was one of the guys, you got to remember, he was one of the guys that was caught up in the period of the day of the 400 years. It was 400 years since the last verse in the Old Testament was written. And then 400 years passed and they were waiting on this guy, the Messiah, the Lord, 400 years until we see the birth of Christ. That's where Simeon grew up. Can you imagine waiting that long? And generation after generation after generation is just waiting and waiting and waiting. We get upset if we have to wait 10 minutes. I mean, I, you, gotta, you better not be in a hurry when you go shopping at Christmas time. That's the worst thing you could do. And I had to remind myself every day I went shopping. Uh, this, this year, when I was out shopping, I had to just remind myself, brother, it's going to take all day. Don't be thinking you're going to leave your house in Kilgore, run to Longview and do two or three errands, and then, and then be home in a couple hours. It ain't happening. And as long as you don't get in a hurry and you're okay with waiting, you don't get upset and you don't get, you don't get fired up. But anytime you're in a hurry and, and there's the line in front of you, is it okay for the pastor to say, people irritate me? <laughs> I love them. All right? It's okay. I, you know, I love people. But you can love somebody that irritates you, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, man. If I, I can't stand it, I have one thing to get. And heaven forbid that thing is only found at Walmart. <laughs> oh. I mean, that store is the devil. I think if, if the devil had a, a retail business, it would be called Walmart. It's horrible. I try my best not to go to Walmart, but sometimes you have to go. You know, if you need a drill, a light bulb, and some toothpaste. <laughs> And a t-shirt. You have to go to Walmart. <laughs> like, oh, they have everything I need. So I'll go to Walmart. There's a little secret that guys know that I'll, I'll let you guys in on. That if you will park at the lawn and garden section automotive part, you can usually get in and out real quick over there because nobody's nobody goes in that way. They always go in the in the one of the two, you know, main doors. If you will park around to the side, you can kind of sneak in the lawn and garden area, and usually there's no line over there either. Now there's only there's only one checkout counter. But usually there's no line over there, so I'm like, okay, I got one thing to get. That's all I need. That's all I need. We ran out of eggnog, and there's one place that you can find promised land eggnog, Walmart. All right? So I'm like, we need one thing. So I'm going to run in, and I'm going to grab it. No problem. Park by the, all right, it's cool. There's not that many cars here. And, and evidently, word got out that the, 
the place to be was at the lawn and garden section because I got one thing and there's buggies full of stuff in front of me. You know, and, and sometimes people are nice and they see that I have one thing. But I let this one person go over the holidays because uh, we had a whole bunch of us and we were getting a whole bunch of stuff. And she came up and I, and, and I, said, I said, well, there's a whole bunch of us, so you go ahead and go in front of me. And she goes, okay, stepped in line and went, come on, guys. <laughs> and she had like 12 people with her. <laughs> that's not how that's supposed to work. <laughs> wow. Took advantage of the system real, real bad right there. But, but when, when you wait, we get irritated. However, it's very, very important that we make a, a, a difference between waiting in the world, waiting in line to get your stuff, waiting, and waiting on God. That's a whole different ballgame. Waiting on God, you should be actually hoping for, praying for, because when we wait on God, we are putting ourselves down and making sure that it's done God's way and His time and not, and not ours. There's favor, favor from the Lord when we wait. So that's what was happening in Simeon's day. He was caught up in, in this 400-year period of just waiting. And the Israelite people were just being tossed back and forth between different political unrest. There were the Syrians and then, then the, the, the Roman Empire. And they're, they're all persecuted. And it seems like the Jewish people, the Israelite people, they were they've always been persecuted from day one. You know? And so it, that's what's happening right in, in, in this time period. They're just getting bounced back and forth between when horrible leaders... Uh, over the past 400 years, we saw the leadership shift uh, from uh, the Maccabees and, and his sons, Matthias Maccabee and his sons, and the Hasmonean dynasty, and lots of heinous rulers that came after that, and, and, then, and then on up to the, the, the Edomite family that, that King Herod was married into. And, um, and, and King Herod, we know from the story, was, was evil. I mean, just an evil, evil person that ordered the killing of, of all little baby, baby boys. In the midst of all this political unrest and strife, Simeon and others like him were patiently waiting on the Lord to send favor, to send the true king of all people. Simeon had lived his entire life waiting on God to move just as he said he would. We have to keep that in mind. As we move into this new year, we have to keep in mind God has already made us promises. God has already laid in your heart a purpose. We sometimes get sidetracked because New Year's Eve brings about New Year's resolutions. So res there ain't nothing wrong with making resolutions. However, resolutions typically are what we want and what we think should happen. And they usually, the, the top, top three resolutions are work out more, lose weight, make more money, right? I mean, hey, that's a good year right there, right? Let's be more fit. Right? I'm going to work on my six-pack this year. Kick, 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 kick. Right? I'm not even making that a goal. <laughs> Don't anybody ask me, how's that six-pack coming? <laughs> it's not. All right, um, so, uh, but that, those, are our, those are our, you know, that's a resolution. But God has already made us some promises. So when we go from this Sunday to next Sunday, I want us to think about some stuff, and I'm going to offer you a challenge here in a little bit about what to think about, how to start the new year. What are you going to do this? Because I've already started. I've already started about, man, you need to keep a cleaner house. You've got to get a handle on this yard. Man, there's leaves all over the place in this yard. I bought a brand new leaf blower, and I ain't even cranked it yet. You know, so, I mean, you know, and I've thought, man, you really need to be a better, a better husband. There's ways that I can be a better husband. Not many. I'm pretty good. You know what I'm saying? But uh, there's a couple of ways I could probably still, you know, uh, still. <laughs> uh, I mean, she, there's, you can make a lot of goals in the area of, of uh, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, I'm kidding. She, there's nothing she could do. She can't be a better wife. Um, all right. So, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's where we are with, with this versus where we are in our lives. We're wanting to do some stuff, and this is the time of year that we start thinking about it. And my challenge to you toward the end is, is going to be, is going to be this. I'll just go ahead and let you know. Um, 
to stop and before you make any resolutions, before you decide, I'm going to be a better wife. I'm going to be a better husband. I need to be a better father. I'm going to, I need to be, you know, produce more at work. I'm, I'm going to make some more money. I need to lose weight. I need to work out more. I need, I'm going to run a marathon. <laughs> whatever. Um, whatever your, your, your goals are, stop. I'm not saying that you shouldn't make them, but before you make them, just stop. And step back and ask, what resolutions does God want me to make? What does God want me to do this year? I mean, I want to I get in better shape. Well, does God want me to be in better shape? I, he might not want me to spend my time on, you know, maybe I'm okay. Uh, he wants me to eat better. Well, maybe you eat great. Maybe you eat terrible. And you want to you know, you eat better. I don't, you know, but what does God want for you in your life? Does God want you to make more money? Or is that just you want to make more money? Does God want you to spend your time on your house? Or do you want to spend your time on your house? Now, I can't answer that stuff for you. I would like to think that almost any time you clean things out, that is a godly thing to do. If you eat better, that's a very godly thing to do. That's one of the things in God's Word that we hardly ever talk about. But it's in God's Word, the same as teaching your, your kids about baptism and reading their Word and the Bible stories. It's, you know, so those types of things I would think are, are definitely in there. But I want you to stop and think about what does God want me to do and then wait. Wait on God. Wait for God to answer you. Because He will. He will answer you. Pray about it. And wait for, wait for that word to come. And if, if you're familiar with talking to God, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with talking to God, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Just wait, wait till I hear him? I, I'm not going to hear voices in my head. Well, you may not hear voices, but God will talk to you. He will talk to you. He'll have somebody come up to you out of the blue. And you're like, man, I just prayed for that. You know, he'll, he'll have a song that comes on that fires off a, ah. He speaks to us in many, many different ways if we will wait on him. So through all of the political unrest, through the guerrilla fighting of the Maccabees, political mover, maneuverings of Jonathan and Jude, Simeon waited. Through all of that junk going on in society, he just waited. He was true. He was steadfast and waited. And through the crafty manipulations of politically ambitious families, he waited on God. Through the topsy-turvy economy of the Jews, Simeon waited on God. Through the cultural transition from Greek Hellenism to a world dominated and controlled by the Roman Caesars, Simeon waited on God. Waiting on God is vital because waiting on God first brings about anticipation and that brings about excitement, thought, and dreams. When you wait, oh man, you start getting so excited about stuff. That's, we all just experience that at Christmas time. When we go hunting, how many of you hunt? Raise your hand if you hunt. Hey man, that's what I'm talking about. Some real men in here and women. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Um, love hunting. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a message uh, on, on uh, I've done this from time to time on hunting. So uh, I'll let you know when it's coming up so you can uh, invite everybody you know that hunts. But um, one, of the, one of the greatest things um, about, about hunting is everything gets quiet and you can hear things that you've never, you cannot hear otherwise. And there's a message in there about being quiet and turning off the noise and hearing God's voice. But I'll, I'll, I'll share that later. But one thing, one thing was said this year when we were hunting was it was cold. The first morning that we went hunting was this, this Wednesday morning. We woke up, and it was 27 degrees outside. And 27 is really not that cold. I mean, we've hunted in 19, 15, you know, and, but it didn't feel as cold as this 27 because it was drizzling, and wet, and rainy, and windy. And now that's icy. I mean, it was so cold. I think Pastor John, he was like, how did the boys do? How did they do, you know, uh, hunting? And I'm like, Pfft. They did fine. Like they don't. They did fine. We just bundle them up and take off, man. They do. They do just fine. Not one of them complained about it because their ambition and desire and love for hunting far outweighs what sacrifice they have to make about the weather. Like I'll sacrifice being cold for a minute because ah, oh, because of what you're waiting for. And most of hunting is waiting. 
You just sit and you wait. Why do we sit there and wait? Why are we willing to wait through the cold? My hands are freezing because I always forget to keep my gloves on. Because I'm doing stuff with, with you know, I'm, I, I do stuff, you know, that I, you can't do with gloves on. You know, you load your gun and, you know, you, you blow on the, on, the, on the call and the binoculars and stuff like that. And, and, and I'm doing things. And, and I, just, I just forget to put my gloves on and I forget to put them in my pockets. It's weird, but I'm so excited about being there. I forget my hands are frozen until they start hurting and then it's too late. Then you can't warm them up because there's nothing warm in the stand, except it, unless your dad who took a heater to his stand. Uh, <laughs> there's no reason to be cold. <laughs> I got a heater. Uh, he gave me a heater. This is funny. He's like, you want a heater? And I'm like, no, I don't really want a heater. And then, uh, But I'm going with rain the first morning. I'm like, well, I'll take a heater. Okay, I'll take a heater. So then I'll start thinking, a heater. I'm going to have a heater in my stand, a little propane heater. This is going to be fantastic. And we get there, and the head of the heater doesn't match the propane tank. And so I get all excited that I'm going to have heat. And nothing. You know, and rain was like, thanks a lot, Gramps. But, uh, but Gramps was toasty. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but waiting produces anticipation. So don't ever let yourself get upset when you're waiting on God. Allow yourself to be excited like we are when we're waiting on Christmas. Like we are when we're waiting on that big 10-point trophy to show up. Like be excited when you have to wait. Because when God finally produces what it is you've been hoping for, it's perfect, and it's better than you ever imagined. So waiting brings about this anticipation, excitement, thoughts, and dreams. And also when you wait, you ensure that you're doing it God's way and not yours. Simeon's waiting for the comfort and solace and consolation that only God can bring. And we need to realize and really let that sink in, that the world can bring you some pleasure. We can, you can... Fill out your, this is what I want to do this new year. I want to have my goals. And I'm a very goal-oriented person. And, uh, you know, this year I want to do this, 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 this. And in my speaking career, I want to do this, this, this. You know, I've already got three books written that aren't written yet that I want to, by the end of 2018, I'm going to have these things, you know, bam, 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 bam. And I've already, what am I, what am I going to do this year? And that stuff can bring you some pleasure. The world can bring you some pleasure, but there are some things that only God can bring you. Can you get an amen? I mean, that only God can bring you. The world can give you advice, but only God can give you true direction. The world can give you a high, but only God can give you true joy. The world can give you a temporary hug, but only God can wrap His heavenly arms around you. The world can give you a few moments of happiness, but there's nothing that compares to the joy of the Lord. Simeon is waiting for God to send that consolation. The one prophesied by all the prophets. He's waiting for God to send a king, a counselor, a monarch, the truth, the way, and the light of life. He's waiting for all the Old Testament prophecies to move from words into flesh. The word became flesh. All of that for hundreds and hundreds of years, all was here, boom, in the embodiment of that child. Everything that it represented was right there in front of you. And that's what he was waiting for, for the prophetical to become the physical. And it says that the Holy Spirit was on him. This is one of the coolest things about this story, that in the Old Testament... It said that the Spirit of God fell on people. And even when Jesus came, the dove, the dove came and lit on him. And it said that Simeon had the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God on him. What we have all been waiting for, though, is when Jesus came, he taught us that when he leaves, don't worry, I'm going to go away. They're going to kill me. I'm going to go away. And you will see me leave. But don't worry, because what did he say he would send? Another one like him. Yeah, exactly. Yep. He would send a comforter. He would send uh, another one just like him, the Holy Spirit. And it said about the Holy Spirit that he would not 
walk beside you as I have, Jesus was telling them, this comforter will not walk beside you as I have. This comforter will be inside you. Different from any other time in history that's never happened before. Didn't even happen to Jesus. When Jesus walked to the river and John the Baptist was baptizing, the Spirit of the Lord descended and landed on him. Simeon had God on him. But after Jesus... We have God in us. He's not on us. He's in us. We waited and waited and waited and waited. And finally, this thing came. But it wasn't just some present. It wasn't even just some child in a manger. It was something that would forever change the world and all of our lives. Would never be the same again. Because everyone in here that can hear my voice already has been saved you already have the baptism of the holy spirit has been presented to the world you ever get a christmas present and someone hands it to you and you don't open it no or who does that there every present that was given to me i ripped through it i opened it i fully received it and i've played with all my toys and I still get toys. I love toys at Christmas time. But if someone gives you a gift, don't you receive it? How ugly would it be if, if Curtis walked up to me and was like, Pastor Shannon, man, I love you. And I bought you this gift. And I went and flipped it out of his hand. I don't want that. I mean, how would Curtis feel? <laughs> hmm. Right? Well, that... You know, Miss Janet asked, how was church today, Curtis? I said, a little confusing. Huh? I'm not sure how I feel about Pastor Shannon anymore. That's not how we act. When someone gives you a gift, you open it. You have been given a gift that the world waited for for 400 years. And it finally came. And if it wasn't enough that a star appeared, that an angel appeared to the shepherds, that the wise men came in droves, that the king was so afraid that he commanded everybody to be killed to take this guy out. If that wasn't enough, the virgin birth, if all of that wasn't enough to convince you, then they take the baby on the eighth day to Jerusalem because Bethlehem was like the, the suburbs and Jerusalem was the city. You take the baby to get consecrated for the Lord, to get circumcised. And that kind of procedure needs to, you know, they got to go to the big city. And, and you go to the temple priest. The temple priest is going to perform this. And that's the day on the eighth day that you name your child. Now, they had already knew what they were going to call him. The angel told him a long time ago. But that's the day that it becomes official. And so you're just going through the motions, man. You're just, this is law. This is what you do. This is what you're supposed to do. So Joseph, following law, after the baby was born, they made the trek back, went to Jerusalem to have this procedure done. And they went to the highest of the high, the, the temple priest. And the temple priest, if all that stuff wasn't enough, took one look at your baby and said, God already told me that I would see this child and that it would be the Messiah and the Savior and your baby is him. And this guy don't even know you. And everything that he says is he's the most spiritual guy of the land and he looks at you and says, that is the Messiah. You guys, Simeon recognized and acknowledged that this is the Messiah before Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus hadn't saved nothing. He's a baby. Jesus had not done miracles yet. Jesus had not walked on water. He had not healed anybody. He had not been beaten and walked up the hill and had not been, been hammered into a cross that made him Jesus, that made him the Savior. All this stuff had to happen to make him Savior. He, none of that had happened yet. And he's acknowledging already that is the Savior. He was waiting on something to happen. And before him, there it is, it has happened. Surely if, if Simeon 
can put so much faith in foresight as what was going to happen, we can put that kind of faith in hindsight knowing what did happen. So, you have been given this gift, this gift of the Holy Spirit inside of you. He's been waiting on the world to change, and it did. We are filled with the Spirit. A couple of things came to me, and they happened to rhyme. And I don't know why sometimes God makes things rhyme in my head. But I don't pout because of who's on the outside. Meaning, sometimes we see what's on the outside. We don't like the way we look. We don't like the way our hair looks. We're uh, overweight or we have pimples or, or whatever it might be. But I don't pout because of who's on the outside. I shout because of who's on the inside. I don't doubt because of what I hear on the outside. I shout because of what screams on the inside. If you don't have something screaming on the inside, I don't know that you have opened your gift. Man, I don't ha nobody has to make me worship God. Nobody has to prompt me to worship God. I think at every church or conference or when praise and worship music starts, you can't keep me from the front of the stage. I don't need to be a musician on the stage to be as close to the music as I can possibly get. At the first note, if I'm on the back row, I'm up here. I, I'm praising God. You, nobody has to prompt me to praise God because I have something inside of me that screams. It's not quiet. It's, it, it, it screams at me. It, it yells at me. It's the joy of the Lord. How can you keep that quiet? If you, if, if you don't praise God and, and somebody has to prompt you to give God props, there's probably part of that package you still need to un, unwrap. Get out your box cutters and cut through the tape because you ain't popped a box top yet. Maybe you ripped the bow off, but there's stuff inside. Right? And it's, it, and it's awesome. I don't cry because of what I see on the outside, but I fly because of what I know is on the inside. I've told you guys before, one of these days, don't be shocked if I just float up off this stage. I feel like I can just fly because God is the, the God of supernatural things. And, and my fleshly spirit gets completely overwhelmed with the heavenly spirit sometimes. And I just feel like I just want to float right now. One of these days, I'm going to just float and then land. And I'm just going to keep going like nothing happened. Y'all all going to be like, what? It's, it's going to be awesome. So Simeon sees this child that the Holy Spirit already told him you won't see death until you see the child and then he sees him he has to wait he's old and he waits and he waits and he waits he doesn't give up his spirit until he waits and he waits and he waits he's able to move from worrying about this world to rejoicing about the world to come and what was very interesting is the custom of the law was on the eighth day they named the child and give the child a blessing that's what they did. They circumcised the child, consecrated him to God, named the child, and then blessed the child. The temple priest blessed the child, but he didn't bless the child. This day was unusual. As they bring the child to the temple priest and put the child in Simeon's arms, he didn't bless him. How you bless somebody that is already fully blessed? We, we read in, in Scripture today that all he could do was bless God. He just thanked God, which is very vital that we understand what that was completely different. The first time in history that that's ever happened, they bless the child. Simeon didn't bless the child. He blessed God. The job of the priest was to proclaim this blessing. But how do you do that to this one? So the only choice that he had, the only option was to do a uh, eulogio, <laughs> which is where we get eulogy, which is just basically a, a praise or celebration about this person. And that's what he did. When you've been waiting on something to happen, and then it does, you will praise God. Or I, I guess I should say you should. I guess you, some don't. 
My goodness, though. You've been waiting on something. Think about that in your life. When you've been waiting on something and then it happens, you will rejoice. You will praise. You've been praying that your child's F's would turn to A's. And then he brings home straight A's. You get happy. You get excited. My, my, my kid has made A's in math this whole year. And, and I mean, we've been like, yes. Because last year, not so much. Um, you know, you, that's just a little example. When you've been praying and praying and praying for your dad to be healed, and your dad is healed, you better praise God. But you don't have to tell me to praise God. Like, why wouldn't you praise God? This is incredible. He, my daddy prayed. 2017 brought about some amazing things, but it, it had some junk in it too. At the start of this year, my daddy couldn't talk. Couldn't speak. And we ended this year at our big family thing at Christmas dinner, and Dad said the blessing with no microphone, 30 people everywhere, could hear every word that he said. Hey, I mean, it was incredible, you know? As a matter of fact, he prayed so long, Mom was like, all right, our food's cold now. Um, but hallelujah that he can pray because Terry Pickard's a prayer warrior, you know? And the start of this year had him not praying. And the end of this year, <laughs> he's praying like crazy. You will praise when that happens. You will praise when that happens. And, and man, if you're not praising because something you've been praying for and you've been waiting to see and it's here and you see it and you're not praising God, come on. Unwrap the gift. Unwrap the gift because you have it. When you've been praying for direction and it becomes clear, praise. I have a friend of mine that has mentored me since we started this church, one of the founders of the, of the, the Cowboy Church uh, in Tatum, St Stacy Wiley. And he was praying about this job change and this and that. And he told me to pray and I was praying for him for a couple weeks. God woke me up when we were hunting on our hunting trip. And I'm like, I need to pray for Stacy right now. And I prayed for his direction. I don't know. I didn't pray for which way I think it should go. Should he get the job? Should he not get the job? Should he, he's going to move his family to this town or not? I didn't pray for that. I don't know. I said, God, make it clear to him. Because when you've been going through a, a time and it's not clear, that's very unsettling. You know, like make it clear. Shut the door or fling it wide open. But make it clear. And I prayed specifically, by the end of the day today, my brother will know which way to walk. And he texts me that afternoon and he goes, God, I went to, I went to the, my final interview and God made it clear to me that door was supposed to close and I'm not supposed to walk through it. You don't praise about that stuff? I mean, we, that's God. I specifically prayed by the end of the day. My friend who I didn't even talk to texted me and said, hey, guess what? And it was verbatim what I prayed for. I mean, my prayers aren't any more powerful than your prayers. And you better believe I praised God. And I told him, oh my gosh, listen to this. Now, this is shame on me for having any kind of doubt because I almost texted him when God told me that morning, you will have your answer by the end of the day. Because God just said, I almost texted him. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to text him. You know, first of all, we're hunting and I'm just going to get, you know, but I, I, what if God doesn't do that and, and I don't want to get his hopes up? Shame on me. Because how much more powerful would that have been? Because now I could tell him, that's what I prayed for this morning. And, and leave, leave the enemy open for him to go, oh, sure, okay, <laughs> whatever. All right, he didn't do that, I'm sure. But man. Don't be afraid to move in God's prayers and stuff, but you will praise when you pray for something and it happens. When, you're, when you pray for your wife to fall in love with you again and it happens, you will praise. When your job application turns to employment, you will praise. When your doctor, when you pray that he will give you a different result than what he got last time because your last re doctor results was horrible and you're going back again this week and you hope that it's a completely different and you pray and your church prays with you and you go back to the doctor and he goes, I don't know even why you're here. Uh, there's no sign of that anymore in your body. Praise God. Like you should praise when that stuff happens. Simeon realizes that that is what he has been waiting for is now in his arms. It's now in his hands. You got to understand that favor means that God is going to open up doors and that his promises are going to manifest in your life. And you may have to wait for what you've been promised 
But when you receive it, you should praise God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, just, I don't understand how some people have received so much stuff, but they don't praise. They don't praise God. You know, and now I'm not, I'm not just talking about like when you come up to church and, you know, you clap and you raise your hands and you, well, that's just one way of praising God. I'm not saying if you don't come forward and put your hands in the air, you're not praising God. That's not what I'm saying at all. You can praise God when the worship team is playing, you know, in your own, in your own way. But you don't have to wait till you come to church and hear music for you to praise God. Give him the praise that he is due. He gave us a present, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And He has done things in your life that He needs to be praised for. And He is going to do things in your life that we need to allow Him to do, even if it means, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Wait for God to tell us, and then we'll know for sure we're on the right path. When we praise God, I, I, I will give you a little, even if you're a reserved kind of person. When we praise God, we don't praise God. I, I'm just going to challenge you. Don't praise God with some, little, with some little praise. If God did something amazing and major for you, praise Him in an amazing and major way. Don't give Him a little golf clap. So special, so special. Little Queen Elizabeth wave. Mm, Jesus, he's so good, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't do that. If your son is sick and the doctors say there's nothing they can do and you lay hands on that kid and you pray for him and you go back to the doctor and that kid is healed, is this what you'd give him? Shame on you if that's what you would give him. But you know what? His promises are yes and amen and true for all things at all times, in all seasons. That's just a big one. Would you give him this if you've been praying for your friend to have clarity and your friend texts you and has it? What's the difference? God came through for you. God answered your prayer whether it was a major thing or a minor thing, he heard you, answered your prayer. Don't give him a little golf clap. Praise God. Praise God. One of my challenges for us all this, this new year, find a way to praise God in, in, differently and in a bigger way than you've ever praised God because you've got a reason to celebrate. We had a lot of stuff happen to us in 2017. But it doesn't matter what happened to you or what you're hoping for. That stuff is worldly stuff. We can praise God for what He has already done and for who He already is. Because Simeon, Simeon was acknowledging this before all of this even happened. Just because of who he knew this kid was. Before Jesus saw the cross... In Simeon's eyes, he was already Savior. Before he went and marched, already, already Savior. I'll say it one more time. If Simeon can bless God with foresight, shouldn't we able to be able to praise God even more in hindsight? Regardless of what we might be waiting for in our lives or hoping for, we should be able to bless God, praise God, and thank God when we simply think about God carrying that cross because he did that for us he did that for me and for you you're alive and are blessed because of the gift that God gave you because he climbed up that hill knowing he was going to his death with them spitting on him and beating him the entire time do you know that tonight you're going to go out and you're going to have a great time because it's New Year's Eve you are able to to have friends and family, a house to celebrate in, or money to go to a restaurant. We're able to buy fireworks. Some people celebrate with fireworks. Some people celebrate this way, that way. However you, whatever you're going to do tonight, you're able to do it because God gave you the blessings in order to do it. Praise Him for it. 
praise him for it. And acknowledge that he's the reason why we're even here. We should be able to jump for joy when we think about his hands being nailed to the cross. And we should be able to weep for joy when we think about him in the, in the sixth to ninth hour when he actually gave up his spirit. Praise. Praise when we think about that early Sunday morning when all of that had happened and he got up. He got up. All that political turmoil, King Herod trying to get him, the Maccabees guerrilla fighting, being ruled by the Syrians and being ruled by the Roman Empire, being persecuted and oppressed for 400 years. They didn't, they, they didn't see another book be written, but they waited, they waited, and they waited. And finally, finally, it's here. And then all of that happened, and he gave up his spirit. And that back then and there, they thought, is all lost? Is he really who he said he was? And then that early Sunday morning, he got up. We can praise him for that. We can give him thanks for that. This week, when you're turning over new leaves and dedicating to get in shape, be a better mother, father, father, husband, wife, whatever, do better in school, keep a cleaner house, here's your challenge. Once again, let it hit home with you. First, stop and pray and ask, what does God want me to do? What does he want for my family this year? How would he have me act towards my wife? If you act towards your wife the way God wants you to act towards your wife, you're going to be a fantastic husband. If you do it your way, she's going to be mad at you. And vice versa. If you are the wife that God calls you to be for your husband, your husband is going to love you in a way that you've never seen before. If you do it your way, you're going to be confused. All right? What does God want you to do this year? What do your goals need to be from God this year? Wait. Pray about it. And then wait. And when God gives you the answer, and the answer is crystal clear, now, fire off on it. And you'll have a completely different year when we learn to wait on the Lord the week after Christmas. Amen? Amen, amen. All right, everybody, let's stand to our feet. You guys, join me in, in continuing to pray for people that are sick, that are out. I know healings, healings went down today in this church. Continue to pray that they be gone. Continue to pray day in and day out. God said to pick up our cross daily. Pray for it daily. Every day, speak, speak power into your life. Speak positivity. Speak healing into your life. And as we celebrate tonight, you guys have a very safe, safe holiday. Um, be mindful of the Lord and what he's done for us when we bring in the new year. And when the clock strikes 12, fire off some fireworks, have a toast, kiss your wife, whatever you do, and, and then thank God. Can I challenge you to do that tonight, no matter where you are? Of course, how many of you are going to be asleep at midnight tonight? Can I get a what, what, amen, <laughs> right? Hey, pastor, I'll hit you in the morning. When I first wake up, how about that? How would that be? Okay, when you first wake up. <laughs> I just started looking at several folks. I'm like, wait a minute. They're not going to make it till midnight. And then I thought, I ain't going to make it till midnight either. Our kids are old enough to be like, hey, Rain, you're in charge. <laughs> Bring in the new year, buddy. Me and mom are going to bed. Uh, but um, think about your week this week and next week in church. Have some goals, some resolutions. Have them done. Have them made, but have them made differently this year because they're what God wants you to do. All week long, think about how would you want me to do 2018? And you got a week to prepare for it. And next Sunday, come back with those things, with those things in mind. Amen. Father God, thank you so much for this season, for this year. Thank you for 2017. What all went down this year, Lord God. Thank you for bringing us through everything. Everything that we went through, we survived it because we're here. Father God, we just praise you for that. I pray that you lift folks up that might have lost someone dear, 
I pray that you lift folks up that might be wondering how they're going to make it in 2018 because 2017 hit a blow to them, Lord God. But I pray that everybody puts our trust in you. I stand before you now and say, I do, Father God. I put my trust in you. Have your way with this church. Order my steps as you would see them fit. I pray that everyone here can say the same thing. Order our steps, Father God. We thank you and praise you for what you've done. And we worship you, Father God, for who you are. We give you all the power, all the praise, and all the glory. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, you guys. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Have a fantastic week. See you next year.